there's a lot of funny business surrounding Photoshop's generative fill. It's great for the YouTube views to show an amazing result that it can give you, but have you ever wondered why almost nobody ever zooms in on the results? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you why that is, and then I'll show you how to get results from these tools that anyone would be happy to zoom in on. First, let me ask you, have you ever opened up a photo on your computer and thought the composition was slightly off and you wished that you could go back and point the camera a little bit more to the left or a little bit more to the right? If so, then Photoshop's generative expand feature promises to let you fix that in editing without having to go back and reshoot it. And Adobe want you to believe that it's as simple as using the crop tool to expand your canvas and then let artificial intelligence fill in the gap with the generative expand feature. But there are big problems with how this works. The first problem is kind of like trying to accurately paint a picture of Manhattan having only ever seen what Brooklyn looks like. If AI has to actually guess what to fill the space in with, then your expanded image isn't going to be actually anywhere near what was really there. And if you're shooting something recognizable, you're setting yourself up for failure. It's going to be pretty embarrassing when somebody points out how your photo is fake because that's not what it really looks like. But let's say that you only need to expand something that's not recognizable, just maybe some grassy fields or the ocean or some trees. Even then, generative expand still can create an amateurish mistake that you might not notice until it's too late. So look at this example zoomed out. Looks fine, right? Well, how about when I zoom in and we pay closer attention to the details? It's kind of like we've done our Manhattan painting using crayons. Close up, the details are completely blurred and pixelated. Why is that? Well, it's because generative AI still only creates pixels up to a certain resolution. So anything larger than its maximum and it's as if you've copied and pasted a tiny patch into your image and then stretched it across the whole thing. So how do you solve this problem? Well, you've probably seen other videos explaining that all you need to do is fill the gaps in in small 1000 by 1000 pixel chunks instead of using generative expand in the crop tool because then the generated pixels won't be stretched over that large area. And that's okay sometimes and it does work, but it's not always reliable. Because when you look closely at this example that I made earlier, you can see that there's a visible line between the original pixels of the image and the AI generated pixels. And that's because Photoshop can't always replicate the natural patterns and textures of the original landscape, especially when we're doing it in these small chunks. So what is generative fill actually good for? Well, the good news is it's actually really useful and can produce wonderful results in the right scenario. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. But for now, unless Photoshop gets some severely upgraded AI technology, then generative expand is gonna remain virtually useless, at least for us landscape photographers anyway. Now, the one thing that AI is great for is removing small objects and distractions from your photos, but yet again, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. The problem this time is that Adobe have packaged the wrong way into a tool that they want us to use to make it seem as easy as a single click. It's good marketing, but this one in particular is gonna result in photographers ruining their images in other ways. So let's talk about the remove tool. First, let me show you how easy Adobe want it to be to remove distractions like people from our photos. With the remove tool selected, I can click find distractions and then click people. And we can see this purple overlay on the areas that Photoshop has detected people in. So all we're supposed to do now is click this button and let Photoshop remove them. And bam, the people are gone, but in their place, a huge problem. Just look closely at what it's replaced the people with. Basically garbage, barely even a close approximation of what was actually behind them in some areas. Now the sneaky thing about this is that it's close enough to pass at a quick glance, which is all that matters when these awesome new features are being marketed and demoed on YouTube. But with that said, it's not all doom and gloom. This one is fixable, or should I say, it's doable properly a different way. Now, if you'd like to see exactly how I removed all these people from this busy scene using a combination of generative AI and cloning related tools, there's a full walkthrough video in my Clone Tools Mastery course, which you can get on the link in the description and pinned comment below. For now though, here's the 8020 version. All right, nothing can fix this mess, so let me undo this auto people removal and I'll show you the best current way to get rid of them. What you need to do is take the lasso selection tool, draw a selection around individual or small groups of people, and then right click the selection and choose generative fill from this pop-up menu. And then hit generate and wait for Photoshop to do its magic. Now it's pretty close to magic because look at this result, it's a lot better. Not perfect and I'll show you why and how to fix that next, but it's a lot better than the auto remove tool that we looked at a minute ago. 
Alternatively, if you're low on generative AI credits, you can still use the remove tool, but instead of using the one click remove distractions option, create a new empty layer or have the create new layer option checked here and carefully remove people one by one. So it typically doesn't give as good a result as generative fill, but it is a decent option if you're tight on AI credits. The third editing mistake that these fancy new tools are creating is the sneakiest one of all. It's kind of like having a plastic apple in your bowl of real fruit because it kind of looks like an apple at a glance from a distance. But the closer you get, the more you realize that something's not quite right and it looks a bit out of place. Well, it's the same thing with these generated pixels in Photoshop. So now let me show you this problem and then I'll show you how you can easily fix it. So if I zoom in close, you can see the generated pixels are ever so slightly smoother and a little bit more glossy than the original pixels. A plastic apple among the real fruit of a photo. But luckily this one is an easy fix because you can use the add noise filter on a low setting to rough up these glossy pixels and make them a little bit more real so they blend more naturally in with your original image. And if you find yourself needing to remove things from your photos often, then this will all help. But what will help even more is having full command over all of the cloning and generative AI related tools in Photoshop. But you can get that in my Clone Tools Mastery course via the link in the description and pinned comment. Or if you wanna discover an amazing tool that Adobe should be advertising from the rooftops, but for some reason are hiding it away in a dark corner of Photoshop, then watch this next video.